today is promoting political stability in Ghana. Now, this topic deals with how we can keep harmonious living so far as political parties are concerned. So one best way we can promote political stability in Ghana is to operate in what we call democracy. This brings our first subtopic. So democracy. Now, when you talk about democracy, democracy comes from two big words. Demos. Which means the people. And then counting. Which means the ruling. Yes. So demos means the people. Granted means the ruling. In some book, you may see the ruling power. Okay, so according to the Greek, democracy is the ruling the people. That's the meaning of democracy. Apart from this, there are so many historians and sociologists with different definitions of democracy. But the most popular one was given by the 16th president of the United States of America, Abraham Lincoln. So, according to Abraham Lincoln, according to Abraham Lincoln, democracy Yes, according to Abraham Lincoln, democracy is the government of the people, for the people, and by the people. This, this, this system is based on the consent of the people in the process of government. Apart from that, we can also define democracy. We can also define democracy as the... Above all, democracy can be defined as, as a system of government in which the wishes of the people are taken into consideration in the process of government. That is the meaning of democracy. So in this case, this practice is based on the principles, the ideas of the people. Good. Yes, the next one is Ghana is considered as a democratic state. So let's look at how we can promote it. Ghana is a democratic state, so how can we promote it? So, our next topic is factors that promote democracy. Factors that promote democracy. After this subtopic, I expect all learners to come out with the features of democracy. Good. Okay, so the very first po uh, point I would like to talk about is good and workable constitution. 
as we have known from our previous lesson, that constitution is a set of rules and regulations for governing a country. Good. So, in order to promote, in order to promote democracy, there should be a workable constitution. Yes, the constitution spells out the the powers and function for each agency and organizations. So, when you take the the government, for instance, we have the three arms of government, and we all have their powers and functions stated or defined in the constitution. So when you take the executive, for instance, their powers are defined in the 1992 constitution to be precise, Article 57. The legislature, Article 93, and then judiciary, Article 125. Good. Aside that, the constitution also safeguards our fundamental human rights and freedom. That brings another point. Respect for human rights and and freedom. Yes. So when you talk about human rights, human rights are rights that a citizen is entitled to enjoy under the 1992 Constitution. So when you are using Ghana, for instance, the 1992 Constitution has stated it clear. So when you read the whole of Chapter 5 of the 1992 Constitution, it talks about fundamental human rights, starting from Article 12. Good. Yes. So democracy can be promoted if the human rights, such as right to work, right to live, right to education, right to freedom of movement, if all these human rights are guaranteed, promoted and protected. This can promote democracy. If we are not denied, the people or the citizens in the country are not denied of their fundamental human rights. That will promote democracy. Good. The next point is free and fair election. Yes, there should be free and fair election. <coughs> free and fair election in a sense that <coughs> if there is any any regent from the election process, that will bring conflicts. It will create confusion between political parties. So one, one may ask, so which institution or commission is responsible for conducting and supervising public election? That brings another point. So before this can be assured, there should be an independent there should be an independent electoral independent electoral commission. Yes, when you talk about electoral commission, can you read Article 43 of the 1983 Constitution, where their powers, function, and qualification are being described or defined? You can see that the electoral one function of the electoral commission is that they are to conduct and supervise public election and referenda. So the main purpose or function or duty of the electoral commission is to conduct or supervise public elections. Yes, so we should make the electoral commission independent. Now when you say independent of the electoral commission, what does it mean? Yes, the electoral commission is seen to be independent when the, this commission is free from any political party. That means that no agency or organization or institution can influence or interfere the duties and the the duties of the Electoral Commission. That's what it meant by independent of the Electoral Commission. So if the Electoral Commission is independent, yes, that means no political party can influence it. There wouldn't be anything like gerrymandering. Yes, so when you talk about gerrymandering, it simply means demarcating some electoral boundary in favor of political party. That is when the Electoral Commission is not dependent. In other way, other mostly the ruling party, mostly the ruling party can influence the electoral commission 
to demarcate some electoral boundary in favor of that party. That is what we meant by the remanding. So we can eliminate these practices from the country. Good. Another point is opposition opposition party. Yes, opposition party or parties. Yes. When you say opposition party. Now, when you take Ghana for instance, we have Ghana consists of about eight political parties. So eight political parties. So after election, by all means one party will be declared as a winner. So the rest of those parties, they become opposition party. That is so when there is opposition party, when there is opposition party, their main work is to serve as a watchdog to the ruling party. So they criticize. They constructively criticize on the programs and policies of the ruling party and put it on its toes. That will bring about accountability, thereby promoting democracy in Ghana. So I'll end here. So your question is, if Ghana is a democratic state, then give five features of a democratic state. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.